quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Hello, you're listening to the podcast, So There I Was. It's how all great aviation tales begin. This is episode 93, Explaining Space to Neil Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of a tall order, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing funny. just fine, General. <laughs> it's a very funny story. It's told by, uh, you know, of course, Gallo, our guest Gallo, who is already uh, a well-known Awesome storyteller and kind of famous Marine Corps aviator. Indeed he is, a legend in Marine Aviation. Our third visit with Gallo, and we really enjoyed having him back. So that was great. No no uh, sponsors this week, but we have those bringing the show to you are all of our Patreon supporters and direct donors. at So there was the dot .us slash Patreon or finding the donate link on our website. So there was dot .us. So thank you so much to all of you who throw your hard-earned money at us. We are humbled and grateful. Very humbled, so, and thank you. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I've lost track of whether we said thank you or not, so thank you right up front to Rick Mosley, new tanker aircraft commander. Thank you very much. And Patrick Knorr, Trixity, became a division lead, upgraded his, his level to the division lead donor, donor. So thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Trixity. And, yeah. Hey, a quick congratulations this week to uh, one of our listeners, Fig. This is kind of a cool thing. Stick's son, Tyler, earned his Eagle Scout. Yeah, that's so, that's outstanding. Yeah. Big deal. Big well done, Tyler. Deal. Well done, sir. Indeed. Congratulations. Uh, and you, you worked hard for it, I know for a fact. So good for you. So, hey, we got a couple of those five-star reviews we were talking about. It's about time people stood up and gave us what we earned. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for the reviews. Very yeah. humbling to read. Yeah. Why don't you read a couple, Fig? Well, I'll read this one. Let's see. Five stars. Fantastic. Best and most entertaining aviation-related podcast available by far. A real opportunity to sit on, sit on hangar talk with the legends in military aviation. Great job, guys. From yeah. Apple makes this too hard. Outstanding, great stories. Feels like you're in the ready room. Amazing interviews too. Bridges, bridges to gap between tactical aviation. Bridges the gap between tactical aviation and airline flying as well. That was from Country Boy seventy yeah. four. Thank you. Actually, that that was from Apple. Now I've lost track. There was one more here. This is yeah. This was Country Boy seventy four wrote excellent podcast. Keeps getting better with each episode. The history, stories, and guests are both informative and entertaining. Here we go. Repeat and fig as military and commercial aviators themselves take a conversational approach in their interviews with guests, intermixing humor, seriousness where appropriate, and their commitment to honoring each guest and provide understanding to the listeners is clear. We try to do that, and I th I think we mostly succeed. We. Uh, We've had some amazing guests, and it's, we couldn't not honor them. They're amazing. No. Everybody's got a story, and some guy, some people have even multiple stories that, like like a couple of episodes ago, we were slack-jawed <laughs> when we were hearing these stories. Right? Oh, my God. Exactly. So... And and you wonder, you know, are are you touching hearts? Are you, are you getting the job done or not? Sometimes you, you wonder or you doubt. Well, man, we got a letter fig, and I'll tell you, I think I want to send it to you. I, I was glad I was sitting down when I read it. I was I, I, stunned I yeah, by this I, I read it. Yeah, I, I yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very uh, humbling to read that. Yeah, so I have her permission to share it. I'm not going to share her name because she, you know, wants some degree of privacy. But we will say that you're in our prayers, and we, we thank you for uh, sharing this with us. She writes, just watched the episode with Bo. I didn't catch his call sign. Excellent episode as always. For your dedication to this podcast, you deserve a standing ovation. Seriously. But I've also been wanting to write and thank you and Fig for what you did for me in the last six months. My husband had a double lung transplant five years ago. In July, he contracted a virus. He passed away between Christmas and New Year's. For me, sleeping in hospital recliners, bringing my husband home for a week, only to have to take him back for another hospital stay was exhausting. I'm not complaining. I wouldn't have been anywhere else. But I also have a business and employees that I'm responsible for. I owe you a huge debt. When I'd leave the hospital, I'd grab my earbuds and I'd be on the deck of a carrier. Or I'd be listening to Brian Schul speak of his journey. 
I'd let go of everything else, and eventually I'd be laughing with the two of you. I am serious when I say I don't think I'd have made it through these six months without a place to decompress and find my feet. I'm mourning the loss of my husband. He was a warm, funny guy who through it all never once complained. I'm very lucky. I have a great extended family who have been amazing through all of this. But you guys, you studied me every day when I needed it most. Wow. That's, uh, that's powerful. It, yeah. Uh, it's fig, I'm almost in tears reading this. Yeah. I mean, oh, my God, uh, oh, yeah. what you've gone through. And if we've eased your heart through some of this, well, wow. We, we're just damn lucky to, to have stumbled onto something that helped you, and we're grateful that, the, that it does. So. Yeah, it's, it's other people's stories. You know, it's not, it's not, it's it, yeah, not, it's, you. It's it's not, not you and me. We're, we're just, uh, yeah. we're just asking the questions. It's yeah, pretty we're awesome. We're the conduit and that's it. So, yeah. So if you want to send us an email telling us what chumps we are, send it to repeat at so there I was dot us or fig at so there I was dot us and sticks at so there I was dot us and uh, bring us down a notch because man, that put us way too high. <laughs> Listen, Repeat and I are a couple half wits. Now, now Sticks, on the other hand, he's he's a, he's a full wit. And he's a so, whole wit. There you yeah, go. He's a whole wit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you to all our sponsors over the years. Obviously, all the uh, supporters on Patreon and all that. If if you can visit any of them with that, you know from the links before, please do so. Big one is Robin's Bird Brain Designs dot com. She's been with us from the beginning. We let's see where else uh, we need to start. Well, let's chat a little bit about uh, Gallo and and then get out of the way. Well, well, so it the time went fast like like it always does, but it yeah. was. I have three pages of notes here. I was r- r- furiously writing notes as he's going, <laughs> and I'm at the same time wiping tears out of my eyes from laughter. But boy, you know, it starts off fast with with watching a harrier go off the end of a dribble off the end of a, an assault ship. I came and, in on the end of the terrifying yeah. part of that. I had yeah, gone we, downstairs we, to, to get a libation. And I don't even call before we started recording. I, come I back don't remember how we got on that story. Oh, I asked him about the, uh, the Harrier carrier. And then okay. the next thing I know, he tells me how he inadvertently watched a keelhole event, uh, yeah. which has a happy ending. And let's not ruin it. But yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could have been bad. Should have been bad. So, um, yeah, but, he has yeah. test pilot stories. Of, yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Talks Absolutely. about, talks about a couple of flying nightmares. I'm not uh, flying nightmares, but really with flying nightmare? with nightmare <laughs> 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 stories. Right? Yeah. You know, you know, nightmare is going to have to come back on and refute some of this stuff. I'm sure yeah. because, uh, He's, he's you listen to Nightmare? Sh- Step he's, up. <laughs> he's put a black cloud over Nightmare right now. <laughs> exactly. So uh, you know, t- He honors his niece, uh, Shannon, who sadly passed from cancer, but uh, talked about all the things that the Marines did to uh, to make her feel a little bit less alone during her uh, her battle for her life. So that was kind of nice to uh, to listen to. And I felt like a big dope with nothing to say. I, I didn't know the answer to the question when I asked it. You know, told me it had a happy right. ending. You know, I was thinking the same thing when you asked it. So it's, oh. it, you know, we're we're both thinking the same thing. I, I was like, well, I hope this has a happy ending. But yeah. anyway, being, it does. He never the know. diplomat. He said, you know what? And and her son is is a fine young man, and and that's her legacy. And so you know that that is a happy ending. She was a good mom to him. So that's yeah. that's great. Well, the time goes fast. I think we should get out of the way and, and listen to more Gallo's stories because they're priceless, truly priceless. Right. And it, maybe instead of don't sit on the ejection seat handle, in Gallo's case, we should say, hold on to the canopy. Or yeah. don't, don't spill the mason jar. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Another potential title for this show. This here is a true story. We're out. Sit. Crossing the pond at night in the world's smallest cockpit on the tanker through the weather. Oh, and to the uh, tanker crew who uh, did that. Thanks a lot. We really appreciated that. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Well, there I was, crossing the pond, and you could see that I wasn't exactly fond of all the... Good to see you guys again. <laughs>
It's Likewise. Always, it's always in, good to see you, sir. In, in preparation for this, I had, this is no kidding, a root canal this morning. What? Ooh. So I just assumed the rest, the rest of my day was going to get better. Oh, my gosh. That's, <laughs> I'm so Vic, sorry. I think we've just been compared to going through a root canal. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. I, it's, making, it's making you guys look good. Yeah. <laughs> Even a root canal makes us look good. There you oh. go. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Well, repeat here, coming to you from New Hampshire, my co-host, Fig, you at home? I am. I got home last night. I'm in Kearney, Missouri, just outside Kansas City, and we are graced by the presence of Gallo once again. Welcome, Gallo. Indeed, well, thank sir. You. Great to be here. Th- thrilled, thrilled to have you back. And as we stated on the, the last time you were here, we're guessing you're going to have a, another story or two available, and, and you do. So we had to have you back. When I was downstairs getting prepped for the show, you two were chatting. I, I hate to to ask that unprepared or if you are or not, but I came into the most terrifying part as, as a uh, young pilot found himself in a boxing match with a, I don't know, half million ton ship. What, what happened? Well, this was aboard the LH, LHA uh, Nassau. Okay. And we had, it was, re- it was referred to as a Harrier carrier. And what we were trying to do, and I think Sugar told you about making sure that the concept was well understood wanted to know if we could expand our firepower, our, our carrier aviation, by using some of the smaller carriers. Putting Harriers aboard didn't require the same the same support. But at any rate, so that was, we put two squadrons aboard, a total of 20 aircraft. We And what I was started out with was I was the one of the LSOs, and I was also Sugar's XO and maintenance officer. So we had our hands full with that. And as the LSO, speed was on the bow, and... We were taking, I think we had, we were going to launch five and we had them all lined up and speed was about the third one. And we, and I think we explained it before the, or sure we did that short takeoff stop. It, it's what you rotate the nozzles to as you go off the bow and then you combine your jet lift with your wing lift and that combination will let you fly off successfully. Well, what happened was speed for whatever reason attempted to abort the takeoff. He just didn't, uh, I don't know if he heard night noises during the daytime. Not sure what happened. It, he may have had some kind of compressor stall or something. But at any rate, he elected to stop. So what he did was he, in, this is all conjecture because he doesn't recall what happened. And I, I was just watching it as the LSO. And my guess was he went, I said, as I saw him accelerate towards the bow and then decelerate, I called braking stop because I wanted him because obviously he wasn't stopping with the brakes. And I said braking stop, which is deflect those nozzles forward to act as aerodynamic braking. And then what I said was the he still continued to accelerate. So I said power because I wanted him to come up on the power and use it as reverse thrust and, and get it stopped. When I said power, he accelerated slightly. So I think what he did was he went from the stow stop and went to the hover stop. And so that didn't do anything for him. All that did is, and so we watched him go over the bow, just about two or three knots, just over. And the guys on the deck said they heard a tremendous crunch. I couldn't hear it up in primary. But at any rate, the, in the air boss yelled, you know, launch the SAR, get the helo airborne, get, and he kind of went wild. And I was thinking, there's no way. I mean, this is, this is not going to end well. I remember look, turning around and looking at the wake and I had my hands on my hips and, and listening to him, he launched the helo, and I saw a head bob up, still attached to the parachute, and speed had gone under the hull. Fortunately, the ship had just come out of overhaul, where they had cleaned all the barnacles, all the things that would rip you up if you were keel-hauled, which yeah, would be purposely yeah. pulled under the ship. But yeah. at any rate, he went through the screw, still had his chute on. He cracked his helmet on the, on the hull, and he broke an arm, and he was at dinner with us that night. And so, at any rate, he, uh, unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, that was his last flight, and I think he was he was joining <laughs> the ministry, which was fine. He had a lot to be thankful for. And so I got, there's a, I got a couple to. couple of times there where it was it was it was really interesting, but I think it was successful. I think we we displayed the ability to to generate a lot of sorties very quickly and to get them back aboard very quickly. And so, at any rate. There's a, there was a whole, 
I don't know if it's classified or not. I think not, but there was a whole report written on that. But it was not, it, once again, it's kind of like when I talked about the ski jump. When you have, when you look at, we can, we might be able to replace your big decks with some call, smaller carriers. That becomes very much of a threat to the Navy. So oh, there was nobody, yeah. there was nobody in Navy blue cheering that particular program. <laughs> no, no. Can I, can I back up and ask you, I, I think you said you were at sea, was it 117 I, days? I, I forgot. I just remember how brown the lettuce was after 100 days. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, did you did you go to the bed? We did two you... movies. We alternated. We were, let's see, I'm trying to think. We were off the coast of Libya. I remember Gaddafi tried the line of death in that, ah, in that, okay. it's that time. I'm pretty sure that we turned around. We we're headed into our first port, Malaga in Spain. And as I recall, we turned around and said, not so fast, go back and float off the coast of Libya and let Gaddafi know how we feel about his line of death. So at any rate, most of it was in the Mediterranean. We had, we had some interesting times. We got intercepted by Russian bears, Russian aircraft. While you we were, were in the med? Yes. And I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I looked at my logbook to make sure I wasn't spreading one lie after another. I need to, I remember a bear intercept, but <laughs> now I'm thinking it might've been Norway. I don't think they were in the, in the med. Well, you never I'll, know. I'll, well, as long as there's no eyewitness, it was anywhere That's you exactly wanted to be, sir. That's right. That's right. You, you tell us where it was, General, and we'll be okay with that. It was either in the Mediterranean or Norway. Was it daytime or nighttime? Yes. Now, during the day, because we distinctly saw him give us a bird. Oh, okay. It was, it was a great, great picture of that one. I think I sent it to you guys. And uh, I think you may have. Yeah. So they were kind of enjoying that as much as, as, much as we were. Did you say it was a bear or a bear that it was a bear and I think it was a big big bomber propeller yeah. to it. Yeah. Keeping up international relations, I think is the That's right. Well what they did was they uh, they gave us a warning beforehand. They said when you intercept and then we flew a wing on it for a while and, and took some took some pictures. They're taking pictures of us and and what they would do is start a slow descent and then turn into you. Hoping that at some point they get low enough to scrape you off on the on the water, which would be a, a coup for them, but uh-huh. that was they had apparently scared some uh, some sailors who had been out there tracking them. I think in A sevens. Nice. Wait, you asked me, you asked me about being a general, and I said that leads me to my to my first story about leadership. Oh, nice. I, I okay. started, it's all about leadership. It's all about setting the example. And I, when I was at the Naval Academy, between years. I would work on that 30 days in the summer. And my uncle had a uh, construction company that he, that he worked with and Barton Malo Construction. And they were building the library in Detroit, the, uh, the city library right next to Wayne State University. And so I was down there as a summer hire. You can imagine you get all the glamorous jobs. I was down sure. at the very, was it? I was down putting tiles in what was going to be the gutter in the basement. It must have been 106 degrees, and I heard this in the school bells. Anyway, I'm down there sweating like a pig, and and this guy and girl are out, and he's carrying her books, and they went down. They watched me. They couldn't have been 15 feet away, and they're looking at me for a while, and finally she pokes him and says, see, if you don't straighten up in school, that's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> so, so I, very early on, I tried to set the example. It doesn't have to be a good example every time, so. <laughs> not every time oh that's awesome oh but uh no ultimately walking around uh with with two stars on your uh on your collar and or shoulder by the time you left active duty and i i believe my question to you was was it was it surreal uh, what what was that like it, 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 i can imagine it was a cross between glorious and horrendous no i don't think it's horrendous at all I okay think the- First enough, you're you're lucky. To well, get let me there. let me clarify. I'm sorry. By by horrendous, I mean a, a terrible weight of responsibility. Because with a simple word, you you can change a whole lot of lives. Well, you can. And that's a that's a big responsibility, and I, that's why I mean by horrendous. No, that, that's very good. I, I think yeah. you're right. You have to you have to be really careful with your criticism. You have to you can you can be re- very demoralizing, and so 
that's, I think, being slow to criticize and, and being thoughtful is very important. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's a thrill. I spend a lot of time shaking hands. And invariably, I hear, I never shook hands with the general before. So you can do a, the smallest things are really appreciated. When you, when you fly with the guys, they said they like to say, I flew with the general. So you have enough authority to, you can be the biggest jerk in the world, and we all know some, or you can enjoy it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I remember going, because sometimes it backfired. Uh, one time at the Marine Corps ball, the, I said, we'll just drop into a couple. So anyway, I said, I told my aide, find out what they're wearing, what the uniform is. And we just started going. We go to two or three a night. And they spread it out over a couple of weeks. And I, I, I never told them. I just found out. I never stayed for dinner because, you know, they, well, they'd be painting the rocks white. They'd be going crazy. And, and so we said, no, I just, I just showed up. Well, then when you don't show up at somebody's and they, they're waiting for the big surprise, all of a sudden you can wind up disappointing a lot of people. The, uh, but it was, yeah. it was fun. I had one, it was, it's kind of a mixed blessing. I was home in South Carolina at my niece's home. And she had gotten cancer. She's a young, beautiful woman and just a, a lovely lady with a beautiful baby, Wallace. And she had gotten a rare form of cancer, was going through radiation. And mm. I was with her brother and, and her uncle. And the three of us, or four of us, were there. And I finally said, she, and I said, Shannon, what, what bothers you the most? You know, sometimes it's better when you just say it. And I, she was profoundly sad thrilled with her son, but sad, you know, with her condition. And she said, Uncle Joe, it is losing your hair. She said, it might sound shallow, but I have to tell you, it makes you, it gives you a feeling of being lonesome and alone. And I, I was, I was surprised at that. And I said, we can take care of that right now. And I looked at the other two guys and they said, they got out the clippers and we said, okay, no longer are you alone. So I went back to I went back to the air wing bald, and when I got in there, of course, they all thought I was sick. And so (laughs) might have been, please, we might be able to get rid of this guy. Anyway, as I went out to different units, all the bald guys showed up, and they wanted a picture. And so with every unit, I have about two dozen pictures, with one with VMA 214, another one with the Fatema ground crew, with with the air traffic controllers, with all... They got, and I, I suspect there's a couple of them shaved their head to get in, to get in the pictures. But in each one, I put in VMA 231 support Shannon. And we, we sent, started sending these back about one a week. And it, it was successful in that Shannon got a big kick out of it. So anyway, I, I just, I was glad we asked and the, all the troops were, were pleased, but that was one time being a general paid off for me in terms of being able to, to get a bunch of ball guys together to, to support somebody who's going through an awful time. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Tell, tell me there was a happy ending to that. I'd love to, I'd love to. The, the happy, the happy ending is that Wallace is a fine young man now and he is a credit to his credit to his mother. That's Indeed. Great. Wow. Well, wow. well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's, yes. Well, I, I, uh, I meant that put to be, a, but I'm happy to hear for him. Yeah, past. no, that's uplifting and that's great. I just, I'm sorry you lost your niece. My condolences. That's, that's always tough to lose someone you want to love. Right. I mean, sure. And now I've, I'm speechless. <laughs> oh, that's sorry. okay. Well, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'll, I'll go back yeah. to, I'll go back to Pax River. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Some times and some, some others. It was wonderful in terms of going through test pilot school. I flew 19 different kinds of airplanes and you were allowed to stay current in two airplanes at the same time. And you just kind of read. My disappointment was I had to ride an F-8 on Saturday morning and it crashed on Friday. It was the only one of the last few left. Or five, the last one yeah. that Axe River had. But at any rate, on one, so we flew all kinds of different airplanes, including helicopters and the rest. And I remember flying a P-3 and we lived in base housing, and in the apartment next to us was Amy's, my daughter, Amy. She was about maybe eight or nine years old at the time. And Amy was, her best friend, Celeste, was, and they were, I heard them talking, and I, I was close by, and Celeste said, 
a P3 went over and Celeste hit, and her dad was maybe six five or so. He's a big guy. His mother was big too. So I suspect that, that Celeste is a big girl now. But at any rate, Celeste says, she, she kind of pulls one on Amy and says, that's what my dad flies. He flies the big ones. And Amy said, my dad flies a lot of them. I'll bet he could fly that one. He said, Dad, have you ever flown a P3? And I said, I did yesterday, as a matter of fact, because I was just at that part of the syllabus. Celeste looks me up and down, and she says, can you reach? Because <laughs> they rode bicycles together, and the, the, the limiting factor on your bicycle is, what can you reach? Right. So can you reach? reach? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So much so much for my flight in the P3. Unfortunately, yeah. I can't reach. Well, there you go. There you go. But you had some uh, yeah. had some yeah. other airplanes. Yeah, there's some uh, others. So, so Moby uh, 10 and 234 spin tests. Well, what are you nuts? <laughs> night observation friendship. And they, sure. they had, uh, they put a flare on board and they wanted to up gun. They, they put some bigger engines on board. And that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made is I was flying the OV-10 as part of that Navy NPE, Navy Preliminary Evaluation. And I was scheduled to do the climb test. And I didn't think that one through real well because it's about 100, 100 degrees on the ramp or more at Pax River in the summertime. I'm in this OV-10D. I'm soaked through my flight suit. And then I climb up and they want to know what the service ceiling, what the combat ceiling was. Well, the combat ceiling is you stop when you get to 200 feet per minute climb rate. Right. And I think the service ceiling is 100 feet per minute and the combat is 200. But you get up around 25,000 feet. And now, now you're well below freezing up at 35,000. You're at minus 55 degrees centigrade. So I had no idea how cold it was. It overcame the heater by a lot. Because the OV-10 is not, I mean, they're not paying much attention to that. I think it's, I didn't want to quit because I hadn't, I hadn't, I had the instrumentation on. I would have preferred to lie about the whole thing and just land. But I'm being monitored from the ground. So I do have an eyewitness. And I'll tell you, I think that's as close as I've come to pneumonia in my life. It, it was cold. And then we did, I went out to Beechcraft in Kansas and did T-34 Charlie was brand new. And the T-34 Charlie, we did, I did the spin test with the chief test pilot. And the chief test pilot and I would, we would swap back and forth. And I had a hard time with it because as I told you before, I, I the chief test pilot was really good about letting me do most of the flying because when I stopped flying, I started puking. And so anyway, the, uh, it, we had one more to go. And as I recall, Pax River was due for some really bad weather. I don't know if it was, but at any rate, they were going to close down the airport. They said so. So he said, take off. I'll get one of the engineers to go with me tomorrow on that very last flight. And, I'll, and he said, it, it looks to me like, they're going to close down the airport here. You won't be able to get out of town. So I did. And then when I got back to Pax River, the, the admiral had sent his, his, his car up, his driver, with a, another set of orders and tickets to turn around and go back. I took off in the morning. Bob, the chief test pilot, took off. His tail came off, and he spun into the ground on that flight. And so they wanted – they were sending me back to do the – to be the government representative for the, for the accident board. Oh so gosh. that was, that was, but talk about being fortunate. You, it's all that, all that's between you and stay, being alive or dead is just, just dumb luck. Cause it hadn't been for weather. I certainly would have been in his back seat when he speared oh my him. Gosh. And, and right. had you, had you flown yourself out there in an aircraft and were flying yourself? Back? No, that- no commercial. Okay. I, I went out. I went out commercial out of Dulles, out, out of National. Wow. So you would have been in that airplane had you not left because. Oh, of I, left yes, left. most definitely, and and so it was fortunate, and and as a matter of fact, we did get did get held up going back on that flight. Was held up for a long time for that same weather. Hey Gallo, what what year was that that uh, you, you were involved? in? Nineteen seventy six. Nineteen seventy six. I went through test pilot school in 75 and then did the flight testing in 76 and 77. In the T-34C, the T-34, was it in the fleet? Was it in no. The fleet? It was not in the fleet yet. Not in the fleet going, yet. Be, okay, you guys were it was in the still, it, it was still in Kansas, yeah. 
Okay. I, actually, T thirty four was in the fleet. T thirty four C was not Charlie. In the fleet. Yeah, that's what that's what uh, repeat and I flew in primary was the. C. Okay. Wow. I'd recommend that. <laughs> yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> the other one I was going to tell you about it. This is, I, I heard uh, nightmare talking to you guys. Yeah. And I had a yeah. couple flight nightmare, and they're all exciting. <laughs> first one I, I came back after as a lieutenant colonel back to Cherry Point and Nightmare was a was a, one of the instructor pilots and so that was my first flight ever in a TAV-8 and so I had never been in one before because they hadn't purchased any by the time by the time I went off to TPS and they were just coming back in so anyway we got in but I, I distinctly remember that flight and I'm trying to remember how we got out but we came back went to the south pad and said, let's do one more thing. And Nightmare says, let's do one press up. You got it. I said, okay. So we got it into a hover, immediately got a firelight, de- decided that landing would be a good option. And so we landed. And I'm trying to think of it with the TAV-8. I just, I just remember the emergency evacuation of the TAV-8 was a big deal. I don't know if we went over the turtle back. I, all I oh, yeah. remember, it was <laughs> easy to get out of. Yeah, but there's we no were, steps on the side of that thing. Oh, we were not ready to wait for somebody to show up to help us out. Right. But at any rate, I would have remembered a broken leg. So. Hey, Gallo, was that a, a, a TAV-8A or B? No, A. TAV-8A. A, okay. Yeah. And so, you know what I, I find ironic is that, you know, you, you flew the A, and then when you come back to get recalled, you got to fly the TAV-8, which is, you never flew a two-seater in your life. That's just... <laughs> No. It's ironic. Oh, and then let's see. The next time I flew a nightmare, I was a uh, I was a general, and nightmare was he, and I got on flight orders. I talked to the ACMAC, the assistant commandant, and gave him some tall tale about how important it was to, as an aviator, to have credibility. To I should be on flight orders. And he just got tired of me whining and just said, "What do you? What, what am I supposed to sign, Anderson?" So I, he signed it. <laughs> and so. I scheduled a cross country and they, the guys in Cherry Point were really good. I said, Hey boys, someday you'll be stuck in DC if you get a chance to fly. So anyway, so I was a brigadier general and we flew out to Kansas on a cross country and my, my granddaughter was just born and they lived right next to Dickie Goober there in, in Kansas. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so anyway, we, Nightmare and I are on our way back and we stopped in Nashville, I think. What's a FedEx base? Is that Nashville or Knoxville? Memphis is the big FedEx base. So, okay, so that well, would have been Millington. Yeah, but no, and I think this one was, this was either Nashville or Knoxville. It will, next time my nightmare gets on, we'll, uh, oh. we'll ask. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But McGee anyway, Tyson was always a big fuel stop. I bet it was Knoxville, McGee Tyson. I think so. Anyway, I knew it was a big FedEx base because on takeoff, my canopy came off, went down through the engine, trashed the engine, and then it started vibrating. I remember it was vibrating so bad you couldn't read the instruments. I did a 9270 to get back on the deck. And on the deck, I don't know if the engine seized or what happened with the, but we couldn't, we couldn't get off right away. And there's, I remember 747s been going out. I just wonder how much money we cost FedEx that day as we shut down their little field. With oh, the, they, were, they were sending some, they were sending people home. <laughs> the, I don't know what happened with a, Nightmare probably tell you is I either didn't lock the canopy or didn't lock it fully or it failed at any rate. It failed on one side. The wind caught it and whipped it around and then sent it down through the engine. But it was the so that was my other flight with Nightmare. I don't think he wants to fly with me anymore. So was that was that in a T a T bird or a T? Yeah. Oh, oh it was gosh. Wow. Those are the, those are the two times I was in a T bird. I didn't like them either time. Oh, I, oh, oh, it's nightmare's fault. Go with that. I think. <laughs> what is this? Is this? I, I think it's uh, there's is there some irony. No, it's not a coincidence that it was two times with nightmare and they were both bad. Yeah, they were both bad. <laughs> I'm sure. I can't wait to. I hope you don't have nightmare on anymore. He's going to blame the whole thing on me. I know. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's taking notes. You know, he's going to take notes and he wants That's to come right. back and refri- right. refri- refute everything that you're saying. The other, awesome. let's see, the other thing we did at Pax River was we did uh, LHO, the LHA, which just came out. 
And so actually it was a wonderful time. We, I just caught the right time because if you're in the wrong time at Pax River, they can be doing radar work and you can be, you know, be doing some sonar boy system or something. But when I was there, was both the AV-8B was being developed and the F-18. So there was a lot of action and the LHA was brand new. We didn't have any shipboard operating bulletin. So we took two airplanes out and three pilots. Uh, it was OC again in the same guy, my X-22 buddy. And we we did hundreds of takeoffs and landings to do the, the wind starters. We want to do minimum end speed. And the other thing we want to do was the the wind stars, which gave you the, the allowable directions of the wind and that kind of stuff. You, what you do is a 360 in a hover with a certain wind. And then what you do is when you got to half stick to hold that, that was that would be the end of what, what you'd call them. The engineer would be marking those things down. So you did a lot of it. And at the very end of that, the captain said, uh, we have a we have a family cruise. Would you stay aboard for another day and, and and fly for the family cruise? And I said, I got a lot of family in San Diego. Would you mind if I brought them out for the family cruise? And he said, yes. But he had no idea what he was guessing because in my family is Jim, Judy, John, Jane, Joe, Jeff, Jerry, and Joel. But we have 50 people out there. It's my <laughs> five brothers and two sisters, my mom and dad. So mom is in primary and watching the whole thing. And we're, we're, uh, we're doing the speed of heat and doing it. It was really fun to, you know, how you'd like to take an airplane home. Well, this is take, take your whole family aboard a carrier and do this. Now it had a bad ending. It was follow on work. And the captain the next year made the same offer to a guy named, uh, I won't use his name. Anyway, he, he brought his girlfriend and his mom up and they were in the tower watching the whole thing. And so he came in on, on the last landing during family day with his parents and fiance there. And he did a, a break downwind, didn't lower any flaps and did reefed it around through the 90 with no flaps, stalled out and spun in directly in front of his mother and his oh, fiance. That's so not good. It was, it was tragedy. You know, it went from a, a one year where it was delightful to being a terrible, terrible thing that happened to him. So at any rate, it's horrible to hear. Yeah. That, and, and it lets so it that's, probably that's my last, my last down start. Okay. Good. No, no more. No, that's right. <laughs> okay. Now I can tell you about the, the trans pack. When I had the detachment, we had, we went there commercial picked up, I think it was a five forty. We went, no, it was a two thirty one detachment. And we went, I was the debt commander of two thirty one. And we had to bring the airplanes back. So we're coming back with a flight of six, and which is really exciting because the the I, th- I looked in my logbook and all of the last three legs were 5.5, 5.6, and 5.5. And so there's, as you know, with the AV8A, there's no relief tube. There's no autopilot. So you've got to fly with one hand regardless of what, uh, what you're doing. It's like standing on a beach ball. Uh, especially with 300 gallon drop tanks and, and a pie, it's, it's, uh, it, you have to, you have to pay attention all the time because it's not going to fly itself. No. So at any rate, yeah. different guys use different techniques. I myself brought along a mason jar and mason jar I like for quantity. And I also like the, the wide mouth, which is helpful for accuracy. So at any rate, <laughs> after about four hours, it's, I'm going, I can't wait anymore. That's it. And so anyway, I'm unstrapping one hand. I'm flying with the other. I've got, I won't go into detail about the whole thing, but finally I got all through and I, I nearly filled the mason jar and I, and I said, thank, thank God that's over. And I dropped the lid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, I said, yeah. what, what to do, what to do here. And so we had had some problems with some ejections with lowering the seat, running the seat without being strapped in, without being. So at any rate, I safety the seat. And even with the safety, the, you could, you could detonate the seat, running the seat up and down. So it, it was at the time. And I think it was a Martin Baker that we had the seat in. That was the one that had the trouble. So anyway, I remember safety in the seat. And then I had to put, 
everything back on and then lower the seat all the way to the bottom so I could get to the lid because I couldn't I couldn't reach the lid without it. So I've got one hand here. You're, hey, you're holding and the jar. Yeah, you know, and I'm unstrapping and strapping. You know, this is about the time on the news broadcast that William Holden had fell down and hit a coffee table and hit him in the temple and killed him. I think alcohol was involved. Uh-huh. And so anyway, I heard the mic. I'm busy doing all this stuff. And on the mic, somebody keyed the mic and said, I think the boss is having William Holden disease. And I, I looked up. And it was, I was in an unusual attitude. <laughs> but these guys are going crazy because I hadn't really that. <laughs> Hold that jar. <laughs> so anyway, I was partially successful. So that so was did the, you get the lid? I got the lid. I, okay, I got, so there's a happy ending to that story. Not, not really. <laughs> well, not that kind of happy ending. That's another story. <laughs> we call it half happy ending. There you go. Yeah. At least you didn't come back soaked. <laughs> when I was a debt commander, they called me boss. Because a couple times they called me skipper. And I said, you know, when we get back home, you're going to inadvertently call me skipper. And that's not going to be good. And it's not going to be good no. for you. And it's not be good for me when the CO, no. the real CO, is is standing there. So anyway, so that paid off. I said, think of something else. So he came up, came up with boss, which was, they, at least they didn't call me mini boss or something like that. Too funny. And a, uh, when just, I was, just, Hey, just as a, uh, aside note for our non naval aviator listeners, it's a customary slang term to call your commanding officer, the skipper. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we got yeah, that. Yeah, jealously so. guarded. That's not. Right. Not yeah. So anyway, the, the let's see. I was going to. Oh, I told you. Well, about yeah, that. We were going to talk about uh, a, a Russian bear. We we touched on it briefly. Oh, that was it. That, it was not. It was it was interesting to see the real thing in front of you, but there, it happened a number of times. Yeah, that's, oh, there it is. There's a picture. F-14 right along with us. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's an optical illusion, but in that picture, the Harrier looks almost as big as the F-14. It is. <laughs> and I know it's it not even close. Probably a half mile closer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I, th- That's I remember the F-14. They, they did not appreciate having Harriers up with their business as fighter pilots. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, they, they said, I remember them saying something about, what are you going to do, bomb them? Or, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. thought that was good. Let's see. Also, we had part of, oh, coming out of, I told you about being a group commander. And the group commander got offered a fabulous job. And it was, they needed, the monitor called me and said, Pax River needs a chief test pilot in strike aircraft test directorate. You're right in the middle of, of testing A-8Bs and F-18s. You can fly both. Well, that sounds and like I said, a great deal. Oh, 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 it was a great deal. But it doesn't always work out. I mean, General, uh, the General Blatt was DCS for aviation at the time, and he gracefully canceled those orders and sent me <laughs> up to be executive assistant to the head of tactical warfare programs in the Pentagon. So I went from being able to fly, uh, and I was, and his whole point was sometimes you have to do something when it's good for you, because I certainly didn't plan on making general, and I said, this is my swan song. Go out flying F 18s and, and Harriers. Sure, I, I can't yeah. think of a way to go. And he said, You're not, he said, you may not make promotion. He said, But the point is, you're not eligible unless you get a joint tour. And so, anyway, so he's the one that changed that. The guy that I work for in tech warfare program is, uh, he's actually the Secretary of the Air Force right now. But that was a, uh, that was a giant step backwards from, from being in Pax River to winding your way as the, horse holder for a, uh, in the Pentagon. So that was my, <laughs> but it was worth it. Every time I went to DC, I got some, I got a good deal out of it. Nice. The other thing I told you about, about the, what I fell into when I retired of going on to be the deputy commander and run the, the Udvar Hazi Air and Space oh, Museum. Museum. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I had one that rivals my John Glenn story. The John okay. Glenn and John Glenn used to travel out there, and I, it, that's in some of those pictures as well as Neil Armstrong. But the but what happened was 
after I got that job, I got a call from Tom Povrezny. Tom was the, at the time, was the head of the Experimental Aircraft Association. His dad founded it. And I did the Oshkosh Air Show a number of years. And then when I was squadron commander, Tom said, you've been very supportive. Is there anything we can do for you? And I said, yes. I said, how about if I bring the squadron out? He said, absolutely. So we brought them all. You to know, to the, Oshkosh? Uh, Oshkosh, yep. We oh, had, my uh, gosh. Nice. We, I, think, I think we left two at home. I, I don't know. I said, anything we got. But it, I think we wound up with, I have another picture. I'll send it to you when I get it. But I think that we had, it, it was either 14 or 16 carriers out there. But it was the, and Tom really enjoyed it. His, his ground crew was not amused at all. I mean, there's so much, it's so hard up for space there. And you oh, can imagine sure. just blowing in with that many Harriers did. But we had we had a great time and it was really a thrill. And Tom stayed in touch. So I, I saw him a number of times. And when I, when I went to the Air and Space Museum, he called and said he had a high roller donor group and he wanted to bring them on, on a trip. And he was going to bring them all to Washington, D.C. And he wanted to go out. It was, it was fairly new. And he wanted to go through the the Hazi Museum. And so he brought out maybe, I think he brought out oh, 30 people and he broke into tens. He asked my boss, General Daly, to take one group. And then Don Lopez was going to take one group. And I took one group. And he, and, and he said, okay, uh, Joe, would you take the space hangar? And I said, sure. And then he had some VIPs in the group. And the guy, so I'm taking people around the space hangar. And guess who shows up? I'm explaining space, and Neil Armstrong is in the group. I know. And so I really, you know, and I'm talking to John Glenn about being a test pilot, and Neil Armstrong, and I said, Neil, this is a little embarrassing for me. I said, this, I said I'm preaching to the choir here. Would you, would you mind just taking over? He said, no, <laughs> no, you're doing, you're doing fine. And so anyway, so I continued the tour and told and explained everything in the space hangar to Neil Armstrong. That was, that was not my best moment. <laughs> yeah, the other so, one, the that's got to be like going to school with, in your underwear or something, right? I mean, it's like, oh, crap. <laughs> I also had, I had, had some trouble with speeches. On, as we get asked to do a lot of talks, and one was really nifty. I had the 50th anniversary of Iwo Jima, I was the only guy eligible, and they asked me if I'd fly out to Iwo Jima on a C-130 and be the guest speaker on Mount Suribachi, and I did. I still have the, let's see. Man, how cool is that, repeat? These are right. sands, sands of Iwo Jima right huh? here. So I stopped in yep. like a tourist, but I was, I was the only one there, and they had 200 people, and they had 100 Americans, a lot of, a lot of the last few survivors. They had about 100 Japanese no survivors of the Japanese, but relatives of the survivors. So anyway, yeah. I'm on Mount Suribachi and winds are whipping around and I open up the speech and it goes, Shoop. the speech. <laughs> no more, the aide had not stapled the speech in the, in the folder. So it's gone. And you can hear the, oh, oh no. from the Japanese. They go, this is going to be good. This could be the shortest speech on, on record. Well, it turns out, I was sitting on the, the C-130 on the way there, and I had a book, Flags of Our Fathers, the story of Iwo Jima. Yeah. And I had good a lot of hours to read it. So I read it. I just read it minutes before. So I remembered 6,000 in the first hour, how many people died in the first day. You know, it was, the book was so good, and it was so fresh in my mind that I got it. If I hadn't read that book, it would have been the shortest speech on record. <laughs> right. The, the other memorable speech that I had was when I was the deputy of the Naval Air Systems Command, I was invited out to to have lunch with the Chamber of Commerce in St. Louis. So I went out to St. Louis, went to went to lunch, and they said, oh, you're up here at the head table. And I said, well, that was very nice of them. So I got to the head <laughs> table. I looked down there, a little program with my face on it. Oh. Our, guest, our guest speaker. Nobody had mentioned that to me. Small detail. It's, very small. Is that, is that important? <laughs> Good to know ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, it would have been helpful. But anyway, that was that was a fairly easy one. Another another air burger. But anyway, I said, look, you guys have been working with the government for a long time. This is your chance to just air out. You can ask questions, 
or you can say, tell me what you don't like about the government. Well, hell, that's a, that could fill a speech. What don't you like about the government? <laughs> right. It's like asking a Marine Corps, what makes you ask a Marine, what makes you angry about the Marine Corps? <laughs> right. So anyway, we, there's we, a saying: we, it, we if, if a Marine ain't bitching, you know, he's not that's happy. Right. <laughs> so. Not happy. So when let's oh. see, uh, when when I was back, oh, oh as, a, as a squadron commander, I had. My daughter was a senior in high school and cheerleader. And okay. she had, and the coolest guy in school was John. And John's dad wisely gave him a Corvette, which I thought might have been dumber dirt. Anyway, he's, Amy informed me that he's the coolest guy. In, 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 sure. I said, well, that's, that's wonderful. And so he's we're there. It's about, I think, I recall it was 11 o'clock on a school night. And the, there's a, knock on the door and Amy comes flying down the stairs. She says, I'll get it. And I said, no, I'll get it. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, I open the door and it's John. He gives me this, is Amy there? I said, she is during normal visiting hours. I said, yes, you come back then. And he said, yes, sir. And so he's gone. So this, it was okay. Quieted down for a couple of nights. Amy was, Amy was unhappy. The coolest guy in town, dad. And so the coolest guy in school. <laughs> So oh my, dad. my car was gone. I had it getting worked on. So there's no, nobody in the little carport. So I guess John thought it was safe. So it's 11 o'clock on another school night. And I hear the, <laughs> the sound of the Corvette knock on the door. And I said, who comes in the middle of the night? Doctors? You know, I said, anyway, it's what occurred to me. And so I opened, Amy came flying down the stairs. And I said, I got it. So I opened it up and John's eyes got about this big, you know. And he said, is Amy there? I said, are you a doctor? He said, no, sir, I'm not. I said, come back when you are. And so, <laughs> and so anyway, we go to the ball game that, that weekend. And Amy's a cheerleader. And these two guys in front of me, see that cheerleader in the middle? He says, you ought to hear what her old man did. So it, it got around to have like high school quickly. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. I come think back, my, come my, back my, when you're a doctor, John. Favorite, if you're still out there, that was bad head work, dude. Once, right, once is a mistake. Twice is stupid. <laughs> twice, is, twice is stupid. Amy got over. It. Well, Amy's it when Amy we were in in Cherry Point the first time, and let's see, and Amy was she might have been eight or nine. Anyway, she I spent a lot of time at the pool, and finally. Finally, Amy passed a Red Cross test. And so I was happier than she was that she passed a Red Cross test. Now, because we lived on base and she could take her bicycle right up to the to the pool. And so anyway, the next morning she was so excited. She she got up and she headed off to the pool and she back 20 minutes later. And I said, Amy, what what happened? I thought you were going swimming. She says, no, it's close. I said, really? She said, yes. She said, life got her. She said, somebody duplicated in the pool. <laughs> that stayed with me forever. When somebody Wait, someone said, had a baby, somebody said it's an exact duplicate. I said, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh man! Well, okay, the sticks know, pointed out. That's a ready room down, John. Showing up yeah, twice at the at the yeah, general's John. house trying to that's go after poor, his daughter. That's not only poor head work. That's poor judgment. Yeah. I'll give you. My, I'll, I'll wrap it up. I know that you you two have a. No. Keep I going. A, We're good. This is the best professional advice I ever got. Okay. okay. Right. And for people that don't know, when you move on one place to the other, this is a, as a basic school, which is actually basic infantry school in the Marine Corps. All the officers go through it. And I was there at, at TBS and it was when you line up for anything, or at least when I was there in 1968, when you line up, it's the tall guys in front and little guys in back. So a little guy, and anywhere you go, it's a little guy's in back. And if, if there's a dirt road, the little guys in back are going to eat dust the whole time. Yep. And so they're fondly referred to as the dust eaters. Fig, you understand. Some yes, others sir. wouldn't. I do. But I, I was one of them, and I, I get so fed up. And also when you lined up for sea rations, there, there were no MREs at that point. It was all sea rations left over from, from uh, Korea mostly. Good stuff was going to Vietnam. <laughs> and so, right, the good stuff. Right, right. 
I remember you'd line up for sea rations and when you're out in the field and the big guys got all the good stuff and the little guys got the eggs, the, they didn't, it was awful. I mean, you'd go in for it and, I, and finally this gunnery sergeant, we're all bitching and moaning. This gunnery sergeant says, okay, Germans, listen up. He said, you dust eaters? He said, come on over here. We all went over to where he was to the, nice. he sits up, he says, okay. He says, I heard you bad mouthing ham and mothers. Ham and mothers were the worst, worst of the worst. They were ham and lima beans. And it was, and I think the dessert was, was some stale cake from 1952. And right it was, and then there's, of course, you got your coffee, you got your chiclets, you got your four cigarettes and you got your toilet paper. None of those are going to make the ham and mothers taste any better. No. But at any rate, so he says, here's what you do. You guys are, he said, you need to take, get some heat tabs from guys that aren't using them, get extra heat tabs, get that thing. And he said, take all the salt and pepper that you have, put it in there. He said, heat that up where it's boiling. Take your B1A unit with the cheese, put the cheese in there, let it seep through, let it get all the way down. Take about just a, just a, a pinch of your coffee on top like this. He says, and then get as much of your Tabasco sauce as you can. You put that in. He said, and then you make, get it hot. He said, let it cool down so you can just touch it. Then you pick that son of a bitch up and you throw it as far as you can. He said, that's what you do with family mothers. <laughs> Best advice I ever got. Throw it as oh, far as you can. Oh, that's 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 a that's a good that's I that's outstanding. That. So I have to ask, what's Amy doing these days? Is she fending off boys at uh, her front door at eleven o'clock at night? She is the mother of a Marine captain. Nice. Okay. Re- recon officer in Camp Lejeune, and so anyway, she's she's doing great, and she's a CFO of a IT firm. That's very fantastic. cool. What year were you the uh, CEO of? You were the CEO of 331? CEO of 331. That would what, be in 1988. 88. Okay. So you had just relinquished command when the balloon went up for Iraq, Gulf War One. Uh, yes. Uh, no, that was yeah, 90. Yeah. Yeah. Summer of 90. Actually, yeah. actually I, I was, there's a two year period in there when I was the EA. That was between, and then from there I went to, went to MAG 13, and that was when. That was when Saddam invaded Kuwait. That was one day after I took over there. So oh, I don't know okay. if I had my yeah, ears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah was, so this, I think it might be, might have been 86, 87, something like that. Okay. I, I was the second one. The, I was the second CEO that had a map. J- Jazz had just, Jazz had just jumped out of the, of the one with the previous CEO. And that was the one with the flap impingement. Okay. He was the very first flap impingement. Right. I mean, right. I'm still in contact with Jazz all the time. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah no worries. It's okay. They don't want to talk to me either. I'm, in, I'm impressed just, you still just, have a landline. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. They're like calling every if somebody really wants to get a hold of you. Uh, That's right. Gallo, they're calling every <laughs> phone number they have for you. That is Dean Russell. That's my, that is my other daughter. I don't know how to. Anyway, I cut it off. Marine that Corps. Winter. Marine Corps balls backfired. Well, that was it, not showing up, right? Oh, Marine Corps. Yeah, I, actually, I don't know what happened here. I lost your. We can still hear each other, so that's good. Yeah. Can you not oh, see I, us? We can no. see no, you. This one we can see you, back. so be careful what you do. <laughs> oh, no, the, the back bear, that was the one I told you that I just showed up at a couple of balls, and then I disappointed a bunch of people when I didn't oh, show up. Oh, yes. Okay. And so anyway, but that was always fun, and, but you can't, you can't be everywhere. So Right, right. Well, how about this uh, professional uh, or St. Louis Chamber of Commerce? St. Louis well, Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, lunch. That was the. That was the. Uh, that was the, my picture on. The, showed up and his picture was on the oh, program. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that, I, I missed that. That was St. Louis. Yeah, <laughs> that's always nice. <laughs> there, I got, oh my got it gosh! Yeah. 
Oh, man. Well, this has been so much fun to have you back. And I know we've got more stories to get out of you. There's just no doubt about oh, it. Oh, you, you know, like always, yeah. when we're done talking, yeah. you know, you're, you're going to go, oh, I should have I told him that. This is, yeah. this is like guests after three days. I mean, this is this is a guest after three episodes starts to stink. So, <laughs> no. no, not at all. Well, Never. All, hey, Lawman has five. Hey. Five. At least, <laughs> uh, maybe six. Well, I think we maybe well, we six had to split, with Lawman. Well, they split one of them into two because it was so long. You know, like Gallo's first one. Yeah, we split. Uh, we split his first one into three. Oh we did God, five hours great. with him on the first oh one. My God. Yeah, it was like, was... holy cow. We just sat there listening and listening and listening. And oh, he's, so, uh, but it was, hey, what? it was good. It was, it was fun to have him in the squadron. He provided the entertainment. <laughs> and I don't think that was his intent. <laughs> oh, he's an entertainer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Best, uh, best part about being a Marine Squadron commanding officer. What's oh. the best part? I, you know, I, you know, I know when the, when you look back on things, you forget the bad stuff, and you always you only remember the good yeah, things. There's, there's always that selective recall. You, yes. you, when you talk to somebody about in, a, in their high school days, oh, they're the best time. Talk to a kid in high school and ask him how he's doing. Oh, can't right. wait to get out. <laughs> so right. I, that's an easy one with a squadron. I think I might have mentioned this before. You have to actively screw it up and not be a great seal. Oh, not yeah, right. You have to. Everybody in that squadron wants to be proud of you. Everybody in that squadron wants you to do well. They don't want their boss to be a, a bad stick. They don't want their boss to look bad. They don't want. And so I'm surprised that there are so have been so many bad COs because everybody's on your side. Everybody's trying to make you look good. And it's the, it's the independence. It, it, it's really, and I used to tell the senior guys, especially that, if you like what you're doing, when I was a group CEO, I would get the squadron CEOs together. And I said, stop walking around with long faces like you got the world, the burden of the world on your shoulders. If you like being CEO, say it. Because you, you're dealing with a bunch of prospective CEOs. Am I going to stay in for 20 years? Is it worth standing the group duty, standing the squadron duty, of eating in the mess hall, of doing all the things I don't want to do? So I can spend 20 years to spend 13, 18 months as a CEO. Is it worth it? And the answer is yes. It's absolutely worth it. And I said, so you have, to, you have to say it and you have to act like it. And otherwise, you're, you're not doing your job as a leader because everybody's looking at you. It's, kind of, it's like being a parent. They're, they're paying attention to what you do, not what you say. Right. right. Yep. And every one of those Marines down to the PFCs in the seat shop could, could be a future commandant. That's the beauty of the Marine Corps. Yeah. No, I, I think so, too. They're, they're all proud of what they're doing and they uh, – they want to be good. Yeah. So, no, I can't. I have nothing negative to, to say about being, being a CEO. Well, the, let, let me ask you this, Gallo. What, uh, we asked this of Panther, and I was surprised at his answer. What was, what was the best job? Uh, looking back at your entire career, what was the best job that you had while in the Marine Corps? Because you had several commands, obviously, and, and several other jobs and outside of – what what really tripped your ticket? Made you like, man, this is cool. I am so glad I did this for a career. I, I th it's hard to beat commanding general when you can fly with anybody you want to. When you come, I, I mean, it's it's just <laughs> yeah. Um, you, and yeah. half of and a, as the as the first marine aircraft wing, you've got a whole group of helicopters in Hawaii that that are expect you to come out and visit. You can go to Iwakuni. You can go. And when you get there, you're going to fly one day and have the windshield to, I mean, it's hard to one up that. But I would say if, if I had to get down to it, the debt commander was the first shot at being in charge, fully in charge of people looking up to you for what, what do we do next boss? And I told you, I was in right. Okinawa and we've traveled everywhere. We had wonderful deployments, wonderful wonderful guys in that squadron, Indian. Dan Campbell was in that squadron. He unfortunately was lost in a TAV-8 with a flight surgeon in the back. I think they lost their canopy. But at any rate, and then I don't know if you, uh, Easy Tim Eason. Easy, right? yeah. yeah. And, and Birdman. Gary Pheasant was there. And Snake Buland yeah. was in. And it was Eddie Holcomb Carbo and... 
Steve Patton Buckwheat. So that was a, I mean, it, it was it was a great group. So if I had to narrow it down, I would say Debt Commander was the highlight for me. It was my nice. It it gives you a taste for it. It's right. It's it's, it's good to be king. Right. <laughs> And there's a show title too. It's good to be king, but you know, I'll tell you what. Yeah, no, I, and P- Panther's answer was, I, you know, he was head of NASA. He was an astronaut. He's a test pilot. His best job, he said, is being a squadron pilot. Like, yeah. 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 Well, uh, Panther, Panther and I were both in the, another highlight was, was the Rose Garden. Not, not a highlight living, but a, a highlight in terms of your career in the Marine Corps. You feel like you did something. Most people, most people are interested in, how will I do? You know, you, you, you hope it's going to be good to get a chance to find out that it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, you got anyway, to do it. You got I can, to do it. I, I can understand why he would feel that way. Right. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you indeed. Thank you for your service. Thank you to your bride and your children who sacrificed so you could do your service and all the, all the military I said, families. I, I, I never want the conversations with, with, you know, with, yeah, with, you know, guys like Gallo. I, I never want the conversations to end. No. You know, I want to keep talking about it. I know it's impossible. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, write, write, write a couple more stories down when you think of them because they're okay. going to fall out. They're going to fall out. Somebody's going to, yeah. someone's going to trigger a thought and you're going to go, oh, that's right. Should have told him that. If Absolutely. I had, if I had, if I had a cold libation and uh, time was no problem, I would, I would start, I would, I would be pinging and extracting things from you. You would, you probably wouldn't even remember until I triggered something. Well, that's we okay. When I, when I run out of stuff, I just make. There you go. I, I do too. Yeah. No so, <laughs> oh, man. All right. So yeah, well, we we also need to send out some thank yous to, uh, to well, to all our veterans and active duty who are serving the nation today and to uh, to the families to support them and keep let's keep in thought in our thoughts and prayers the the uh, families of those members who were recently lost overseas oh sorry i hate to be a downer we need to thank dave hamilton over at the mac geek gab he has the mac geek gab the gig gig gab and the business brain and he's head of backbeat media online at backbeatmedia.com who handle all our advertising and bandwidth is provided by cashfly.com fig what would you do if you heard a term today and you didn't know what it was well we we have a glossary and so there i was how do you get to the glossary <laughs> so there, so I there was, I was that u.s slash glossary yeah <laughs> Uh, we, we we have a pretty expansive glossary because we throw a lot of acronyms around uh, here. In Even this. when we don't know we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's be, you know we we speak a second language us uh, in the aviation world, and so if you heard something that doesn't make sense, uh, check the glossary. And if it's not in the glossary, send us an email, and we'll make sure it's in the glossary. Merch store, sitarwaves.us slash merch. Get some cool stuff. Some hats, a clock, a beach towel, a deck of cards. Are you are you rocking the uh, the hoodie right now? Coffee mug. Wearing the hoodie, wearing the coolest cap on the planet. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah, that's, look at you. That's how we go. I gotta get some uh, merch. Yeah. Hey, uh how how would you uh how would you send us a good rating? We got some good ratings, we'll talk about them in the intro to this show. Uh rate so, uh ra- what what is it? Uh so there I was, that U.S. slash rate. Well, that's too easy. Yeah. We've gotten a couple five stars. That's more like it, folks. Step up and put the five stars down. Make it so. <laughs> Come on, man. More of this hard. three star shit. <laughs> We're trying. We're trainable. We are uh, trying. Let's see. Hey, uh, some great aviation photos from none other than BDS Aviation Photography.com. Brad Silcott over there. Thank you, Brad, for doing that then there's a couple other guys we need to thank fig uh, hey. anyone coming to mind uh well the music we're hearing in the background that's the uh, two air force f-16 pilots that make the air force sound good actually that's the dos gringos great music four albums not a bad song on any of them oh. right fantastic and stuff. they let us use their music and uh, they are uh, they were a great uh, guest i uh, forget their episode number it's in the teens i think yeah, it's maybe. back down there early. I bet uh, Sticks hey, knows it. Thanks to Sticks uh, and Bago. Hey, Bago sure. says uh, we passed 600 guests on the uh, Facebook group. That's right. 
So, well, sure. well done. Well done. Keep it going. If you're on the Facebook group, go out and invite two more people. We need to get to 2,000 guests. Make it so. <laughs> hey, Fig, what do you say we blow this popsicle stand? All right. Let's do it. All let's, right. Uh, let's get the saved round out of the way. For, there you uh, go, everybody. Stay safe and check six. Crossing the pond And you could see that I wasn't exactly fond Of all the shit I was wearing On that day Now an F-16 is cramped enough But it's even worse With all that stuff Supposed to save your life But we knew there was no way Cause when you're going down The North Atlantic Man, it's over So by save round, I want to while you're thanking people, I want to thank Repeat and Fig. Thank you. Sent me a coffee cup. A so there I was coffee cup. I got a so there I was. It my gin fits just right in that. Yes. And I want to tell you the thank you for that. It's it's on your merch page, and I'm too cheap to get it myself. So I love getting it. <laughs> love to send it to you. Thank you so much. It's the least we could do. So, well, thank you, guys. Appreciate that, it. That's fantabulous. Thanks, Gallo. All righty. You know what I always say? Oh, boy, is this great. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out.